Hi everybody, um, welcome to our Beckfoot Lifelong Learners podcast. We've got another episode of our second block of pods um, today and our very special guest who will introduce himself right now. Hi everybody, um, I'm Simon Wade, I'm the head teacher of Beckfoot. Right. And now as this is the Beckfoot Lifelong Learners podcast, I always start by asking, is there something that you have learned throughout your career or even recently that's impacted you, impacts you in day-to-day life or has impacted your role? Good question. Um, I think I've been very fortunate in my career, nearly 30 years, I've been very fortunate to, to work with people that have had a profound impact on me uh, as a person and as a teacher. So when I first came to Yorkshire from London in 1994, in 1994, uh, I worked at a school in Leeds, St Mary's Menston, and my head of PE, a guy called Dave Geldart, uh, was a very influential figure nationally, um, and he had a profound impact on me really, because what I learned from him was that you be kind to people, uh, and you be kind especially to kids, and you make time for them in every lesson. So. Everybody that's ever had any contact with me when I was head of PE or even as an assistant head, deputy head, is that you try to make time to talk to every child with every lesson. Um, and get to know Get to know what makes them tick. The same with people, the same with staff. You try to know their backstories. Yeah. Um, and just try to be as kind as you possibly can. And honest. So that's the first thing. When I came to Beckford, then a number of years later, I got to work with a guy called David Horn, who, uh, again, was quite an inspirational shop um, and he told me similar things about being kind to people, being honest with people and believing in people, see talent in especially kids no matter how difficult it is to draw that talent out <laughs> over the course of uh, five or seven years but you have this utter belief that every child matters and they can all succeed and I think if you believe that, that really shapes your philosophy, it shapes your approach to leadership so that it is about trying to maintain really high standards, but also with genuine soul, yes. I think. I think, yeah. I think that's what you've, what after David left and, and we had Jill, that he's always managed to maintain that soul because everybody's mm-hmm. had that, that mm-hmm. ethos. Um, what a wonderful, what a wonderful start. That's something I think everybody can take literally in, into life, not just their careers professionally, but just in everyday life. But in terms of hopefully, that might lead us quite nicely on. What are you here? What do you want to talk about today on this podcast? Oh, my word. Um, I guess I want to talk about what really matters to me as a head because it hasn't changed greatly from what really mattered to me as a young teacher. Yes. Um, and it's about trying to ensure that everything we do, the reason I get up every morning to come to work is to make a difference to young people. Um, that's what motivates me. I've been really fortunate, actually, in nearly 30 years. I can't think of a single day across six schools that I didn't want to come to work. Not a single day. And it, no matter what challenges are thrown at you, you come in every day. And I remember, I remember speaking to a guy through the Speakers for Schools initiatives, and he'd He'd, he'd opened the first comedy store. He'd also sold the biggest ever insurance policy in history. I remember him saying, well, you just get up it. No matter what happens, you just come in and you put one foot in front of the other and keep moving forward. As simple as that. And it always stuck with me. So for me, I want to talk about leadership, the things that are important to me, this notion of limitless possibilities for all of them. A couple of examples of that. Um, and this notion actually that no child should be left behind and I can talk about what drives me philosophically around that that very concept of no child left behind because that's what drives everything at Backfoot and I think we are not we're really I think we're a very special place really really special not perfect but I have this I have this aspiration aspiration to be be perfect to be I don't think we'll ever be perfect. Well, but you've got to I just think to, to be it. a school that's renowned for never giving up on yeah. people. Um, and, you know, a school this size, you always kind of, you never keep everybody happy all the time. But you try. Yeah. You try. What does that, you mentioned a couple of those key topics there. What does leadership look like here then at Beckfoot? 
Um, it's about service. Yeah. Quite simply, it's about service. Um, leadership in, is a really privileged position to have in a school. Um, and I've seen over many, many years, I've seen where that has been abused, I think. Yeah, that's probably the best way to put it, been abused, where it's been very authoritative um, without being, uh, without something. Uh, communication is everything. I've seen people just be very authoritative and not communicate effectively what it is that they're trying to do. And so therefore the message gets lost in translation. And there's no clarity about what you're trying to achieve as a school. So for me, leadership here is about trying to communicate as effectively as possible. And of course, I say, I'll say this all the time. We're a really great school, really special place, we're a real soul, but we're not perfect. But we're trying to be better all the time. I think if you can communicate effectively what it is that you stand for, what you're trying to do, then you've got half a chance. You get people on site. I mean, I'm a Beckfoot lifer, so I stay. And that's a, a getting people on site through the communication. I think it's always been a real strength of the leadership team. I, I agree. I think if, if you think about the things that have happened here um, in the last three and a half years since I've come back, there's been just, I mean, a, just a, an unashamed focus on what's happening in the classroom. Yes. Because teaching is our bread and butter. So you've got to get that right. And I also think you've got to allow people to have the courage to try things out. And if you make a mistake, it's so what? God's sake, just get up again and try again and, and learn from it. It's okay, it's fine. So this notion of, of people being brave yeah. to try things. So teaching and learning is, we put a huge amount of emphasis here on that. And I'm so fortunate that the school is full of great people. Uh, it hasn't always been like that. You know, there's been some cynics. And I can't think, I tried to, but I can't think of a single <laughs> cynic on the staff. So it's about teaching and learning. I also want to make sure that our kids are supported hugely because the journey for a lot of them can be quite straightforward yeah. and for others it's very turbulent. But at the end, if we really believe in this notion of every child matters, no child left behind this limitless possibilities, then you stick with them. So investing in, in the pastoral care for them, uh, getting the curriculum right, and there's a lot of work has happened on the curriculum, trying to make sure that because we've got We've got we're a really comprehensive school and we've got all types of learners here. We've got some of our kids will head off to Oxford and Cambridge, they'll get all nines at GCSC and off they go, and it's great. And we've got others that really, really struggle with the basics of literacy and numeracy that we bucket loads of help. So making sure that we've got that, and that we stick to our principles, which drive the curriculum, the drivers, so knowledge and expert learners, um, committed community contributors, future ready is really important to me. Yes. I was in uh, AP4 earlier watching students who come in in suits. Um, yeah, getting ready for their interviews. It's been, amazing. Been really nervous. Leah, she, she, she put the headphones on. I said, Look, just be yourself. Let your personality shine and just talk. You'll be fine. And she was terrified. And she, I watched her. She, she had her suit, this lovely suit on. And she put the headphones on and just out it came. And they set up and the I, feedback. I, I'm a year nine tutor. The feedback mm. some of them have had, all of them actually, it's really, really lovely. That, that's a classic example of a school actually doing what it says on the tin. You know, this is important to us, so we do it. So we give them just a, a huge number of opportunities actually to understand what the opportunities will be for them beyond this school, not just in Bradford, but you know, nationally and globally. Looking at her today, and she hasn't got Bless her, she's a fantastic kid, but she just blossomed yeah. today. She won't forget that, actually. And when you talk about every child having a moment, remembering something, she'll remember that every time she goes to an interview or every time she fills an application form, she'll believe in herself just a little bit more as a result of coming to Beckford and being exposed to those things. So those curriculum drivers are really important to me. Um, and then it's about by kind of broadening horizons as well. So, you know, things like things like um, trying not to say very I try not to say no to anybody who wants to do a curriculum based trip somewhere. So we've got oh, yeah, we've, got, a, in, but it, we've got an RE trip going out on, uh, on Thursday. We had uh, a trip to the industrial museum last week. We've had kids all well, there are many sporty ones yeah. as well. Yeah, the, the P department are renowned for yeah, sorry about for, that. <laughs> but you know it's very difficult for me to say no, no because I can see the benefits. <laughs> I can see the benefits. We had kids all over Salford a few weeks back taking photographs of God knows what. And they come back. You know, they're enriched for the experience. 
because they won't have that. And I remember at my previous school taking kids to the Yorkshire show, the Bradford kids taking them to the Yorkshire show, and they came back with their heads hanging out the main bus, and it was great. And they told me that they'd seen sheep, yeah. cows. It was crackers, Bunkers. isn't it? It was Bunkers. So, do you remember when we used to take them to High Adventure, Dave? Like going out in only up above Keithley, but mm. the the countryside, you know, these experiences we take them for granted, but you mean so much. And the time with us, uh, it goes like that. I was talking to year nine options, even now, so to parents, two and a half years in now, these year nine kids. And it's gone like that. And in another two and a half years, they're done. They're done. So it's about just trying to make sure, actually, that everybody in the school, all the staff, understand what it is that's important to me as a leader trying to model that uh, for people to know why that's important to me. I could talk at length, talk at length for year 11 kids, we've only got a couple at college and when I came here there was we've got 19 students out doing things if we'd lost them, we didn't know what they were. We've got a couple at college and it's the right thing for them. They're flying because we're checking them all the time and they got pathways through to all 16 courses and think motor mechanics is something to do with uh, that might be here and I'm not sure. They're going to be okay. They're going to be okay because they came to that photo and never gave up. So that's the type of thing for me all the time. There's the loads of reasons. For that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. So I hope that comes through as a leader. I mean, I don't know. I still hope so. But I think that's the does. Like you, that's what, and I feel like here at Beckfoot, we have those same. Not not morals, but drivers maybe. More um, purpose. Yeah, the More purpose. the same reason, and that's much easier to get everyone on side because you've got that purpose and you're doing everything for the right reasons. Mm. I think that comes across in in so. buckets, really. Yeah, I hope so. Um, and I like spending time with kids. So yeah. I spend a lot of time in my big yellow coat outside. Yes, it suits you. It does. <laughs> I took that yellow coat with me from my previous school, and now everybody seems to want a yes, yellow coat. That's so it's a thing. Yeah. It's a fashion. Catch on. Well, thank you so much for your time. I think those that moral purpose has really come through in the podcast and those key things that are so important to you as a leader and in turn to all of us as staff and then what we're carrying through to, to the kids, it's really, really come through. Um, so thanks for sharing that insight Good. with us. Um, it's really, really interesting to hear your perspective on things. It's lovely today. We've had perspective of the students, perspective of leadership. So, you know, keep them coming, guys. If anyone else wants to get stuck in and come and have a chat with me over a cuppa, please do. Thank you, everybody, for listening and thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Really Thanks very much, it. both of you. And anybody watching this, um, be <laughs> gentle with me. Um, and also, if I am willing to come and sit here and do this, Goodness, no, you've got any excuses. We've got mini whiteboards coming up next. Lovely. Exciting stuff. Thank you. Thank you.